Uh, last year, we looked at free fall. And some of you remember when you drop something, what's the acceleration in free fall if we're ignoring air resistance and we're going to ignore air resistance? What's our acceleration in free fall? You all know the number. OK, 9.8 negative if we, if we want to make it down. What direction is that? I kind of said it already. No, uh, just. We're not going to, by the way, we're going to be looking at projectiles from the side. Down is not technically south, but we'll, we'll figure out how we say that. If you call it south, I won't freak out, but I'll give you a bit of a stink eye and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, down towards the ground is not south. Uh, down or vertical, if you want to say it that way, a negative vertical direction. Here's the question mentioned. Catch, 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 catch. Taking lessons from you. That was my bad. Still, no, that was my bad. Give me a nice arcing toss back. Here's the question. What's the acceleration horizontally? OK? And we're going to split it in two. We're never going to look at that curved arcy path. That's much too difficult to deal with without calculus. Instead, we're going to argue, because it's traveling at an angle, did I say angle? We're going to break it into horizontal and vertical components. So read along with me. A projectile is an object in free fall. We studied one-dimensional projectiles last year. We dropped things. We launched things up and had them go down and land beneath us on a cliff. Now that we've learned vectors, we can study two-dimensional projectiles. Here's our first thought puzzle. I'd like you to imagine that a mass is held at shoulder level. Hey, my Nerf dart gun. Let's suppose I hold it at shoulder level and I fire this dart exactly horizontally. Which of the following paths will that dart follow? Path A, that one. Path B, that one. Path C, that one or path D, that one. Will it go straight down? Will it curve down? Will it go straight for a bit and then curve down? Or will it go straight, come to a stop, and then drop? Once again, we're going to vote. Once again, how high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. Yeah. Pardon me? So replace the Nerf gun with a cannon on a mountainside so that we know we're going to get some oomph. Who says A, Mr. Duick? A. No one. Who says B, Mr. Duick? B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Who says C, Mr. Duick? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, Who says D? Uh, D would be what we used to call when I was growing up roadrunner physics. I don't know if you ever watched cartoons, but growing up, whenever the roadrunner ran, whenever the coyote who was chasing the roadrunner ran off of a cliff, he would keep going straight for a while stop, and then he would figure out that he was no longer on the cliff and fall straight down. Objects don't work that way. So D is wrong. Okay. Why is C wrong? No, 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 no. The split second, any projectile, no matter how fast or slow it's going, the split second it leaves the barrel, gravity's acting on it and pulling it down. Okay. No, uh, it's not your fault. I'm blaming bad movies. Movies have taught you garbage about projectiles, and specifically action movies. Action movies have taught you that bullets go straight. They do not. They do not. I, I'm, all of you have probably seen this scene. It's an action movie, and there's a sniper scene. And they're going to heighten the tension. They're going to show you, put the camera through the sniper sight. And they show you the sniper lining up the crosshairs on the target. Garbage. If that's all it took to be a sniper, any idiot could be a sniper. 
Snipers are never aiming at the target. Snipers are far enough away that their projectiles are going to drop substantially. If a sniper is aiming at a target, they're not going to hit their target. If a sniper is trying to hit something, they're aiming a meter above it or more. In fact, they have to take in wind, sideways wind, left and right. They have to take in the fact that the projectile is going to fall quite some distance. They, for very long shots, they even have to factor in the curvature of the earth. Movies have lied to you. They've taught you that bullets and other projectiles go straight. As soon as anything is launched, whether it's launched horizontally or at an angle, I'm telling you the split second it leaves the barrel in the vertical direction, it's accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared down. There is no brief, oh, gravity isn't affecting me and I'm going to go in a straight line. There's none of that. Movies have lied to you. Gravity acts instantly. Okay. Now, the slower you shoot it sideways, the more it'll look like a vertical drop, the closer it'll look to A. So if it's barely moving, something like that. If it's really moving, something like that. But there is no, oh, it went straight for a while and then gravity said, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I better start acting on that projectile now. Not your fault. Bad movies. Okay. Thought puzzle number two. Suppose two identical objects, uh, yep, Two identical objects are held at the same height above the ground. So we're going to go back to my Nerf dart gun. Imagine it's a very good Nerf dart gun with no flaws that fires things at a pretty good velocity. Okay, We're ignoring air resistance, so we're doing this in a vacuum. What if the split second I pull the trigger, I drop a second dart? Just drop it. Which one hits the ground first? Object one, because it's got a more direct path. Object two, because it's moving faster than object one. Or C, they both hit at the same time. Once again, we're going to vote. Once again, how high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. Okay? So here's your options then. We're releasing them at the same time. So object one hits first because it doesn't travel as far. Object two hits first because it's going way, way faster. Or they both hit at the same time. Who says A, Mr. Duick? Object one. A, A. One, two, three, four, five. Who says object two, Mr. Duick? Because it's got a lot of velocity. A bullet fired is going to hit the ground faster than a bullet dropped. One. Who says same time? So here is the key to understanding two-dimensional projectiles. We do not deal with them in two dimensions. We break it up into horizontal and vertical. Vertically, how far is object one dropping? Let's call it that far, dy for vertical distance. Vertically, how far is object two dropping? dy. So first thing I'm going to say is, Same that. Yes? What's the initial vertical velocity of object one if I drop it? We remembered this from last year. Dropped was a trigger word. We said, oh, if you drop something, you can assume that VI is. But now I'm going to be careful. VY initial is zero because it's in the vertical direction. We're going to have to now be meticulous and say, okay, which velocity are you talking about? So I'm going to argue that VY initial equals zero for the first object. For the second object, right when it leaves the barrel, what's its initial vertical velocity? Not horizontal, but vertical. I'm going to argue 
that its initial vertical velocity is also zero. It hasn't started falling. It's going to fall in the instant it leaves. But right now, it's not traveling up. It's not traveling down. It's vertical velocity only, Armand. I don't care about horizontal. Its vertical velocity is zero. So, oh, sorry, Vy initial equals zero. Same for both. They both have the same initial velocity vertically. They both have the same vertical distance. What's the acceleration of this object vertically, of the first object? What's the vertical acceleration of the second object? Same acceleration for both. Oh, vertical. Okay, so we have an equation that looks like this. D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. Oh, but wait, 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 wait. Now we're going to have to be fussier. Vertical displacement, vertical velocity, vertical acceleration. Ooh, what did we say for both of these the initial vertical velocity is? I don't care about horizontal. What was the initial vertical velocity of both of these exactly as a number? Because they're vertically they're being dropped. What did we say the initial vertical velocity was for both of these as a number exactly? Zero. So I can do that. And if I get the t by itself, it's going to be 2 times the vertical distance divided by the vertical acceleration square root. Angeli, do they both have the same vertical distance that they're dropping? Do they both have the same, that's an A, do they both have the same vertical acceleration? Then if we put the same numbers here, what will we get for both of them at the same time? The same time. That's a almost purely algebraic proof, Jack. I didn't make up numbers. I could have. I just said, look, same VI, same A, same D, vertical. And I, again, let's split it up. Who cares that it's traveling sideways? All I care about is both of them in the vertical direction are doing that. Yes, the second one is moving sideways at the same time. Don't care about that. Vertically, they both started out with an initial vertical velocity of zero. They both fell the same vertical displacement. They both experienced the same gravity, same time. Put your pencils down, look up. So what I want you to realize that when we're looking at a projectile that's moving sideways while in free fall, Kyle, the vertical and the horizontal motions are completely independent of each other. They don't affect each other at all. What happens horizontally does not affect what happens vertically. In this demonstration that you just saw, both masses have the same vertical motion because they have the same vertical conditions. Here is the key idea, and this is the one you're going to need to commit to memory. You might want to add it to your purple sheet, but you might be better off not and just forcing yourself to commit it to memory. What's the vertical acceleration of a projectile? What's the vertical acceleration of anything in free fall? You all know this from last year. Negative 9.8. What's the horizontal acceleration? The horizontal acceleration is zero. Because horizontally, if we ignore air resistance, Jordana, and we are, horizontally, there are no forces acting on it. Well, if there's no forces acting on it, Newton's first says the net force must be, uh, the A must be zero. Vertically, 9.8. Horizontally, zero. That's a tricky one for people to wrap their brain around, but I'm going to show you just kind of a casual demonstration. I'm going to walk at a constant speed, and I'm going to throw this straight up. It's going to come straight back down to my hand. It won't end up behind me. It won't end up in front of me because it has no acceleration. If I just do this, it came straight back down. Didn't end up in front, didn't end up back. While it was in the air, it kept going in a straight line at a steady speed which means A is zero.
that's going to be one of the key things. And that's a tricky one because people oh so want to put the 9.8 in for a horizontal acceleration. Horizontally, objects are not accelerating when they're in free fall because there's no forces acting on them. Next page. If you look at a stop motion, turn the page. If you looked at a stop motion or a strobe photo of a projectile, so you took a picture every, let's say, 0.1 seconds, you would notice that the vertical distances are increasing. The vertical displacements are increasing because there is a vertical acceleration, Manchant. But you would notice that each horizontal displacement remained the same because it's not speeding up or slowing down in this direction, in the horizontal direction, because there's no forces acting on it. Since there's no forces acting on it, horizontally, A must be zero. Newton's first. That's tricky to wrap your brain around. That's the misconception I have to gently nudge out of you. When you launch something, it's only accelerating vertically. Horizontally, it's moving at a constant velocity. And if it's moving at a constant velocity, then what must the acceleration be as a number exactly? Nothing. Zero. So uh, if we look at a stop action or strobe picture of a projectile, we find it's moving at a constant horizontal speed, but its vertical speed is not constant. Why is this? Horizontally, What's the acceleration exactly as a number? Zero. Zero. Oh. Vertically, Ange, what's the acceleration as a number? And if I want to give it a direction, I'll call it negative 9.8. That's why you'll notice the vertical displacements are increasing in magnitude, but the horizontal displacements in our strobe photo, the same. I'm going to call these our physics no-brainers. Now, they're not no-brainers. I have to have taught you this, but you need to commit this to your gut because any time that we're analyzing a projectile, those are going to be the first two things we're going to write down before I even read the rest of the question. Oh, it's a projectile. AX equals 0. AY equals negative 9.8. Here is a stop action photo of a projectile launched from the ground at an angle. Did I say angle? Components. What we're going to argue is if you launch something at an angle, you can think of it as two things. You can think of it as moving horizontally and vertically. So I did the first set of components here. Here is my VX. What about right here? How big is VX? Vx is going to be the same size as it was before. What about at the top? How big is Vx? The same size as before. What about coming down? How big is Vx? The same size as before. What about when we hit the ground? How big is Vx? The same size as before. Why? There's no horizontal acceleration. Ax is zero. Vertically, Marcella, is very different. As soon as it launches vertically, as soon as you throw something straight up, what happens to the magnitude of its speed? When it leaves your hand, is it speeding up or slowing down the second after it leaves your hand? On the way up, is it speeding up or slowing down? On the way up, speeding up or slowing down? When it leaves my hand, it takes off and continues going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster? Is it not on the way up slowing down, people? Yes? OK. So I'm going to argue that the vertical component right here, change colors, Mr. Duick, is going to be way less. What about at the top for a split second? How fast is it traveling vertically at the top for a split second? Zero. Even catch, 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 catch. Even if I do that, at the top for a split second, its only velocity was the horizontal component. Its vertical velocity was zero. Back, 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 back. <laughs> wow. We're having a little projectile fun here, Mr. Duick. So at the top, right here, there is no vertical component. It's zero. Then it starts to come down. Which way will the vertical component start pointing when it's on its way down? 
Yeah, in fact, really, if I'd been clever, I would have put the VX right there, and the VY is right there. And it's going to be the same magnitude as at the same height on the way up, just in opposite directions. In other words, if this was right here traveling upwards at 2 meters per second, traveling downwards at 2 meters per second. So negative 2 meters per second. And when it hits the ground, the final vertical component will be the same as the initial vertical component. In fact, the final vertical velocity, sorry, the final slanty velocity will be the same as the initial velocity, but instead of leaving the ground at an angle, it'll hit the ground at an angle, but same magnitude. This is how projectiles work. We're going to start putting in some numbers in just a second. But first, we've got to wrap our brain around the concepts. Example 5 says, indicate velocity components on this stop action picture, and then fill in two key facts. So our velocity components would look like this. There's Vx. There's Vy initial. How come I put an initial on the Vy but I didn't bother putting an initial on the VX. What's the horizontal, ex horizontal acceleration is zero. So VX initial is VX final, is VX middle, is VX. I'm lazy. I'm not going to put an initial. I don't need to. Uh, VY is changing. So at the beginning on the way up, it's traveling upwards. At the top for a split second, VY is going to be zero. So the only velocity is Vx. Then it starts to accelerate back down. When it gets even with the launch, Vy is going to be negative Vy initial. Because it's just reached where it started from. It's picked up all of the energy that it lost. But now it's going to keep going, speeding up even more and more and more and more. Just before impact, Vy impact is that's the biggest magnitude. That's the maximum. That's the hitting the ground. And throughout all of this grace, okay. So, horizontal speed is constant because ax equals exactly what? Zero. Vertical speed is changing because ay is negative 9.8. And Davis, the horizontal and vertical motions are independent of each other. And what I really mean by that, Davis, is don't you dare put a horizontal value into a vertical equation, and don't you dare put a vertical value into a horizontal equation. That's the big sin. That's the most, by far, the most common mistake in looking at projectiles. We're going to look at three main situations, ranging from the easiest to the next toughest to the toughest. The easiest situation, don't write this down, is if we launch a projectile horizontally from a cliff. Like my Nerf dart gun off my shoulder, or I said, make it a cannon. This is the easiest. The next toughest situation is going to be launching from the ground at an angle. Did I say angle? We're going to use components. The toughest situation is combining the two. Launching from a cliff at an angle. But we'll handle it. I think now we're finally going to look at one. Yeah, here we go. I like example seven. I like example seven. I like example seven. Example seven is a nice question. It says, find the flight time and the range of the projectile. Looks like it's being launched from a cliff. Jack, how high is the cliff? Look at the picture. Okay. And what's our velocity? Look at the picture. So yes, I'm getting you to turn the page. I noticed you hadn't yet. You with me now? Okay. What direction? Horizontal. Okay. In the same way that for forces, a free body diagram was your go-to, uh, in the same way that tip to tail is your go-to for vectors, if you give me a projectile question, 
I'm going to use a tea table. You don't need to underline that. Here's what I mean by a tea table. It's a table that, go figure, looks like the letter T. And on the left side, I label that horizontal. On the right side, I label that vertical, X and Y. And I write down, really before even reading the question, my two physics no-brainers. AX is 0, AY is negative 9.8. And now I read the question and I pull stuff from the question or the diagram. It says it wants me to find the flight time and the range. It looks like the range is how far from the base of the cliff. Okay. You're going to find, and this is not meant to be a joke, you're going to spend most of your time finding time. In fact, if the question gives you the time of flight, the question is going to fall apart. So we're going to spend most of our time finding time. I'll call this part A. I'll call that part B, just so we can label it. All right. Let's carefully, carefully take information and put it into the correct column. What is this 20? Sam, what are the units next to that 20? So it's a velocity. Horizontal or vertical or slanty? Well, not slanty. And we'll never put a slanty in here. In fact, if it's slanty, components. Okay. Horizontal or vertical? We can all write Vx equals 20. What about that 50? Vertical or horizontal? Okay. I'm going to make a mistake, see if you can spot it. dy equals 50. That's wrong. What? Okay, so common mistake. Th 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 there's a lot of places, Grace, to make mistakes here, mistakes here. And one of them is to realize if you're on a cliff, are you ending up below from where you started? You'll have to make that negative. The problem here is sometimes if you missed, the, you, last year, if you missed that negative, you always got an error on your calculator. This year, in more complicated questions, you might not get the error. And so you'll just have to pay attention. How many things do I know on the left-hand column? Two. How many things do I know on the right-hand column? Two. I need three things to find the fourth. So there must be something else either. Pardon me? What's the final velocity? Do a belly flop off of your desk and tell me it doesn't hurt when you hit the ground. The final velocity is not zero. So that's common mistake. And I'm glad you made that, but that's common mistake number three. Kids, oh, V final is zero. No, it's not. If it, what? VI? VI is zero? I agree and I disagree. You need to be more specific. What's zero? I think horizontal is 20. What? This is why horizontally from a cliff is the easiest, even though it looks the toughest, because there's a hidden zero. And hopefully, Armand, you've noticed, hey, anytime we plug in zeros, the math gets way nicer. Even you can handle the zero times. How many things do I know in the left-hand column? How many things do I know on the right-hand column? I'm going to find time vertically. I'm going to put a t equals question mark here. OK, I'm going to move way over just so I have enough room. You can put it if you have room right underneath the vertical column. But I'm just going to remind myself I'm finding everything vertically. I'm going to write a vertical equation. I'm looking for an equation that's got a t, a v, a d, and an a in it. There is one. Oh, by the way, Manchin, I could find VY final now, telling you it won't be zero. You can solve, you can, you can also do that. It's not zero. Which equation? Oh, how come you didn't say VIT? Oh, because VY initial is, in this case, so I'm going to be a bit fussier. dy equals a half a y 
t squared, just to remind myself, don't put a horizontal into a vertical. And by the way, by far the most common mistake, kids want to use the 20 as v initial. They want to put the horizontal into the vertical because it creeps them out that there's no velocity. And the question didn't give you a velocity. Well, it did. Vertically, it's, it's zero. You, but you have to intuit that. You have to deduce that. Uh, get the t by itself. I think it's going to be the d stays where it is times by 2 divide by a square root. The other reason that this is a fairly nice one is even though it's technically a quadratic, I don't need to pull out the quadratic formula because vy initial is 0. The time of flight is going to be the square root of 2 times negative 50 divided by negative 9.8. 2 times negative 50 divided by negative 9.8 square root. And I get a time of flight of 3.19438. I'm going to write 3.19, but I'm going to store this somewhere because I'm going to use it. So if I was doing this on a test, I would go like this. 3.19438. I would carry the extra sig figs, maybe to five or six sig figs, and then I would go, I'll write 3.19 seconds. I would put a box around that as my answer, but Jack, I've got the extra digits if I need them. What does part B want me to find? What's the second thing it wanted me to find? The range. What did you say? I got to be fussy. How far it travels is way too vague. How far it travels what? The range is a dx. Part B wants me to find dx. Now, I know ax equals 0. I know vx equals 20. That's only two things. I need three things to find the fourth, and I only know two things. Or do I? What? Oh, time is a scalar, and it can go in either question. And the amount of time it takes for it to fall down is exactly the same amount of time it has to travel sideways? Yes. Yes. T equals I'll write 3.19, but you know I'm using my answer button. I'm looking for an equation that has a D, an A, a V, and a T in it. There is one. Yeah, in fact, it's the same equation as we used up here, but instead of the half a t squared sticking around, this time it's going to be d, I'm going to be fussy x equals v x t. Can you see why some kids would be tempted to write plus a half a t squared, put the 9.8 in? This is why it, it's so tempting, Marcella, to put a horizontal into a vertical. Because in this question, even though it's the easiest question, there's so many zeros. So many kids want to just, no, i got to put something there. Zero is a nice number to put there. Thank you very much. Um, oh, what was Vx? What was Vx? 20? Time? I'll write 3.19, but I'll use my answer button. Sixty-three point nine meters from the base of the cliff. That's the range. Okay. Another way that I could do this question in this question. I gave you the height and said find the range. I could give you the range and say find the height. You'd have an extra distance. You'd have three things in the horizontal column. You'd solve for time horizontally, which is way easier. How would you get the t by itself? In this equation right here, how would you get the t by itself? 
by, by x. You don't have to do a square root or nothing. It's way easier. If I give you the horizontal distance, you'll find time. Then you can move the time to this column and find d by using this equation, but you wouldn't get the t. You'd know t. You'd solve for d just by plug and chug. So these two situations are reversible. I can either give you the cliff height, make it negative, find the range, or I can give you the cliff range, find the height. You get a negative answer because you get a displacement. As far as I'm concerned, those are the same question horizontally from a cliff. That's situation number one. Situation number two, example nine. I like example nine. I like example nine. I like example. Um, you know what? On your test, there's going to be one question where we launch a projectile horizontally from a cliff. And Jack, I'll either give you the height and say find the range, or I'll give you the range and say find the height. And there's going to be a question where we launch from the ground at an angle. Did I say angle? Components. That's going to be our strategy here. It says find the time to top, find the total flight time, find the rate, blah, 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 T-table. T-table. But first, components. Here's VX. Here's VY initial. How come I put an initial on the VY, but I didn't bother putting an initial on the VX? VX is constant, and I'm trying to reinforce that even subconsciously any way that I can. I don't want to make a silly mistake. Color, 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 color. VY initial opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. What about that 100? Hypotenuse? Uh, adjacent. OK. Paige, what do you want to find first, VX or VY? I don't care. VX? Which trig function, folks? Of course it is. Cos 35 equals Vx over 100. So page Vx is going to be 100 cos 35. Here's my t-table. Oh, in my t-table, I can write my two physics no-brainers. Ax equals 0, Ay equals negative 9.8. And now I can tell you what Vx is. And I'm going to carry some extra sig figs because I think I'm going to use this. So it's going to be 100 cos 35. Make sure you're following along on your calculators. I get uh, 81 point, you know what? 9152, there's a zero after that too. So I'll go six sig figs, 81.9152. Page, what trig function was co what was was VX? What do you think VY is? Yes, it is. VY initial over one hundred. VY initial equals one hundred sine thirty five. Backspace and edit. And I get uh, a little yuck here. 57 point, I'll go 3576. Six sig figs will almost always give me three or four final sig figs of accuracy, unless I got really bizarre numbers. So 57.3576. VY initial equals 57.3576. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else I can get from the picture? I don't think so. We're not on a cliff. There's no cliff height or range. All right. Matt, but not Matt. Matt, what's A want me to find? OK. Top, do you think that's vertical or horizontal? The word top. 
I'm going to solve this vertically, top. Problem. How many things do I know? I need three to find the fourth, and I only know two. Or do I? I'm almost agreeing with you. Matt said, when you get to the top, VF final will be zero. VY final will be zero. VX is not zero. It's still chugging along. Okay? At the top, for a split second vertically, it's zero. V, Y, final equals zero at the top. Now I know three things, so I'm looking for an equation that has a T, a VF, a VI, and an A. There is one. Which one? VF equals VI. Oh, our old friend. Get the T by itself, please, because that's what we want to find. VF minus VI over A, yes? Oh, but I'm going to emphasize VY final minus VY initial over A. Y. Just remind myself, make sure I put a vertical. By the way, you can see kids might be tempted to use this as V final. Or another common one, they'll say this is V final and they'll use the 100 as V initial, the slanty. We're never going to use the slanty. After we found the components, Arman, we never use it. In fact, I'm scrolling down, so I'm not even tempted. It's going to be 0 minus 57.3576 divided by negative 9.8. This is nice. I get a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive time better be a scalar so I'm good with that that at least suggests that I've set this up correctly I'm gonna use my answer button so I'm gonna go 0 minus answer button divided by negative 9.8 and I got time to top of 5.85282 or 5.85 Seconds. Is that all right, Kai? Cool. Kai, what's B want me to find? I've scrolled down. Oh, so I guess the total flight time would be that, however long that took. Okay. So B, T, Total. What? Times what by two? Oh, my answer from part A? Oh, and say that loud, what? Okay. I can do that here because we're starting on the ground and ending on the... And so it's a symmetrical path, yes. Uh, that would not work if we start on a cliff and end up on the ground because the path is no longer symmetrical. But I like your thinking. That's how I would do it for this. I could take my answer from A times 2, 11.7. In fact, I get 11.7. Zero five, I'll, I'll carry some extra sig figs, and then I'll write 11.7 seconds. What if I hadn't done part A first, and I'm lazy? Or I could let VY final be negative 57.3576, because in the vertical direction, what goes up must come down. So if it left the ground at positive 57.3576, it's going to hit the ground at negative 57.3576. And if I now go VF minus VI over A, like I did before, if I go 
negative 57.3576. You know what? Better yet, let's go like this. Divide, answer, bu oh, answer button, divide by two. I'll bring back my 5.85, my, my, my eight sig fig answer. If I go negative that number minus that number divided by negative 9.8, I also get the, oh, I totally did that wrong, Mr. Duick. What was I wanting to divide by? Oh, that's not the time value, Mr. Duick. Sorry, I want to go negative 57.3576. I'm sorry, I divided time by time, which was really dumb. 57.3576 divided by negative 9.8. I won't get bang on the 11.7056, blah, blah, but certainly the first six figs agree. I might do that method if I hadn't found time to top, because why would I find something in order to find something if I can get there in one step? Okay. But yeah, I like you thinking. What C want me to find? What? DX horizontal use. Oh, the range. Now I'll use the term range, but I love the fact that Manchin translated that into his brain as horizontal displacement. DX. Okay, what do I know horizontally? Uh, what was VX mentioned? I've scrolled down. What was AX? Zero. That's only two things. I need three things to find a fourth. Ooh, which time am I going to use? The 5.85 or the 11.7? 11.7 is the whole one. And again, common mistake kids make is they forget to double the time for the range. Okay, so uh, T equals 11.7056. Which equation? I think dx equals vxt. What happened to the plus a half axt squared? Oh, what's the horizontal acceleration? Zero. How far down range will it end up? 81.9152 times 11.7056. Or use your answer button if you happen to have that number still stored. And I get 104 meters downrange. Is that right, folks? Anybody else get that? Sorry? I got a massive typo. Sorry, you're right. The one didn't show up after the... Thank you for catching that. That seemed way too small. Yeah, 959 meters downrange, almost a kilometer. So that is horizontally from a cliff. Vy initial is zero, t table. Ground at an angle. Did I say angle? Components, not quite as easy because your initial vertical velocity is not zero. It's a number. OK. We need to practice this. And probably you'll need to do some dulping on a separate piece of paper. So your homework, number one. Here are four different projectiles being launched horizontally from a cliff with a different height and a different V initial. Number two, here are four, five different projectiles being launched at an angle from the ground. Number three, here's a little bit of a thought puzzle for you. See how much you remember about free fall. Four is good. Five is good. Six is good. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I signed them all. And then uh, if you want to, you can start whittling away on the ultimate review, that big thick package. You can, in theory, do five, eight, nine, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, twenty-two, twenty-three. 
25 and 27. Remember for the ultimate review, the answers are attached on the last page and there's a full handwritten showing all my steps answer key online on pitmath.com if you click under block E, unit one. Put your pencils down, look up.